Good day to everybody that's listening to this YouTube, whatever time of the day you listen to it. Today is the 15th day of January 2021. And I'm at my home close to Springfield, Missouri. My name is Joe Heflin, or Joseph Heflin. Uh, most people that listen to these, uh, we don't have a big audience, but we've got a few that listen. And when I mention the titles to these, uh, Sometimes it catches attention of a few more, and they'll listen. I'd like to talk to you today just kind of from my heart, if I can. I don't have anything written down. A few things that I want to show you. Uh, I've run across a lot of people I've tried to give testimonies to. I'm really struck, uh, strange at the way I'm answered many times. But searching the scriptures for answers to anything when you don't know something, then you would like to ask about it. You pray about it, <clears throat> and you look in the scriptures. There's a scripture in St. John 8. Jesus was talking to uh, a group of religious people in his day. I think it was Pharisees. He, he told them in uh, his 44th verse, if you like to read in your Bible, he said, uh, you're your father the devil, and the works of your father you'll do. Uh, he said he was a murderer in the beginning. He abode not in the truth. And there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own because he is a liar and the father of it. And we know most everybody is familiar with the scripture. If you're much religion at all, you know about Second Thessalonians, which tells us about a time when people didn't love the truth, that they'd be given over to delusion, not from the devil, but from God. However God sends it, he said God will send them strong delusions. And that is in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. And it actually condemning the people that don't love the truth. And Revelation 21 also tells us, Fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And we're going to talk about these different things. I look at what's called church different than most people. Uh, and I'd be glad to take a challenge on it if someone wanted to. But uh, anybody can put up a building, and even buildings are wrongly called churches because they're not, they're just buildings. And I don't agree with, you know, going into a building with a steeple on top and calling it a church when that steeple is actually pointing to a pagan worship. If it's pointed like most of them are. Many things I don't go along with. But there's a scripture that says in 1 John 2, verse 27, he talks about the anointing. Now the anointing, of course, in the Old Testament was different than it is in the New Testament, the groups I've been associated with used to teach and tell me that the anointing was preachers. Uh, but actually, if you're going to the Old Testament, it wasn't ministers that was anointed, but it was the Israel itself. The pe they were called the people of God. That's not my anointed. That was Israel. And <clears throat> I believe it still applies to uh, God's children because I believe every child of God that's born of the Spirit is anointed by the Holy Ghost. On the outside, yes, sometimes, and on the inside. <clears throat> Most people trust in a teacher to tell them truth, and they accept what a teacher teaches without question. And <clears throat> I wouldn't be on here today if I didn't think people are supposed to teach or preach or tell you what the Word was or says or teach the Word, because that's how faith comes. But a lot of people just have faith what that preacher is telling me is correct. And <clears throat> I believe it talks about in the book of Acts. They search the scriptures daily to see if these things be true. And what I speak today, if you know, you might just disregard what I'm saying, put it aside, not want anything to do with it. And if you do, of course, that's your choice. But if I say something scripturally, then you should check it out to see if it's true. Or any preacher you listen to, any place, uh, no matter how many years they've been there, how much you think of them, you should try the scriptures 
to test them out to make sure that that man is telling you the truth. Checking him with scriptures. Uh, I call this a day, and I, I won't explain myself. I call it William Branham following the lie. Now, <clears throat> to call a man a liar is a pretty strong statement. Uh, I've been called a liar a few times. It, it hurts, especially when you don't believe you're lying <laughs> and don't know you're lying. But I know people do lie and don't know they're lying. Uh, they're repeating something they're told, and they believe it's truth, but if it's not truth, it's a lie. So that lie may not be coming from the inside of them, but it's speaking through their lips because someone else has said it, and they believe it. Now, I don't know how God will judge that, but where it affects other people is where we'll be judged more than anything else. We're taught to love our neighbors as ourselves and love the Lord God with all our hearts. And if you love the Lord with all your heart, you'll love the Word with all your heart. Because the Bible said in St. John 1, the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So you cannot love God with all your heart if you don't love the Scriptures with all your heart. That's where all truth is found, in the Scriptures. Now, <clears throat> I was in what was called a message for 45 years or better. And I've listened to just about every tape of William Branham, several times, some of them. As I tried myself to understand and believe and uh, accept myself being a part of the bride, and, uh, search for that elusive rapture and faith he talked about. To one day... Uh, I don't know what someone to thank. They, of course, a lot of people, I got the honor last week of someone telling me I was a devil. And it wasn't anything about William Branham. It's something I just spoke in the scripture got him upset. And I, I'm not sure what it was. But that's all right. A lot of people can say anything. But if, if they're asked to back it up with scripture, sometimes they just disappear. I'll have something today I'll challenge you with just a little bit. Uh, to people listening to this, I, I wish we could get message ministers to sit down and talk to us and be rational. I know some has come out. And they realize there's something bad, bad wrong. Now, <clears throat> I know there's many things told about William Branham that's not true. And we certainly have to be careful about repeating things about a man, good or bad, if it's not true. I'm not going to talk a lot about the things William Ram said. Now, you say, was he a liar? If you take the evidence set before you, it would seem that he willingly lied about some things. It is possible that he could have said things under a delusion. But there's no question to anyone with a reasonable mind, someone sent me out email or a comment the other day said they'd never seen William Branham say anything that didn't come to pass. I can not say anything to that person except they're spiritually blind. Uh, that's just not true. And anyone that searches and knows William Branham's message knows that he did say some things about like he would kill a bear the next year he said once, which had been 1964. It didn't happen. Uh, he told about a great meeting in India he'd go and how many people would come to it. It didn't happen. It never did happen. He'd give reasons, but they weren't scriptural reasons. But I'm not, I don't know. You say, did he lie? He either lied or was under a strong delusion to believe a lie. Uh, something that just come to his mind. Or else, perhaps his memory uh, failed him greatly. Now, we'll talk about some of the things that can be easily found if somebody says, well, give me proof of these things. Well, I can. And one man asked me for proof of what I was saying. I sent it to him. He said it would not hold up in court. Well, it wouldn't. Neither would trying to prove William Branham true hold up in any court. But... People find excuses to believe a lie. And that's what bothers me. Uh, did William Branham lie? Well, he told things that absolutely was not true. 
Uh, I've got a couple of things here that I'll share with you that William Branham said. And it starts back at his birth, of course. Uh, on spiritual experiences, if I can turn my paper over there, if you'll just bear with me, and I'll try to get it up there where I, you can read what I want you to. Brother Branham tells about his early spiritual experiences, and he tells about before he was converted. And this is, this is where he got, he said, the date of his birth, which he supposedly already knew it. But the first time he tells this was 1952. And uh, he tells about meeting a woman there that was, I think, a fortune teller. And tells him he was born on April the 6th, 5 o'clock in the morning, 1909. Now, <clears throat> of course, that uh, April was the fourth month, uh, five o'clock, six, that fits in with his teachings of Malachi 4, 5, and 6, that he believes he was, were, however you want to say that. But he tells it plainly, he, he's not a Christian. Now certainly we know he wasn't, because we wouldn't believe you lie about something like saying, uh, you know, I'm not a Christian if you are. But anyway, he, he went ahead and said that, and uh, he said, I, I know nothing about the stars, and he's just a game board of Indiana, doing the best I can, thinking went on like that. I might can move that over a little bit. Well, I cannot. Maybe. There we go. Well, you read all of it if you want to. Well, on searching for vindication, and that was written by some people that was searching for the truth, trying to prove the things William Brown said was true. You can find most of the information I got here. I'm going to talk about the census which we assume a census would be filled out with his mother or dad, is filled out twice. Both bear witness as William Brown was born in 1907. So <clears throat> you say, well, they just got mixed up. Well, you wouldn't think a mother and dad got mixed up. My dad was born back there about that time, and I always knew his birthday when it come on uh, October the 10th. And... My mother's birthday was August 8th, and she was a little bit older than my dad. And they raised my dad was, especially out in the wilderness on a mountain in Arkansas. And they kept up with the birthday. And the census said that twice. And I found this in a paper that I want to share with you. I, I guess everybody's had a chance to read this, so if you'll bear with me, we're going to go down these two things right now. First, a hospital bill rendered. Uh... It's not important about this. I mean, I know hospitals make mistakes. But when a, a hospital, excuse me, a newspaper, not a hospital. Newspapers make mistakes. I've read things I knew was mistakes. But when you can collaborate what a newspaper has written with something proven somewhere else, and generally it's truth. Uh... The bill for William Branham here being shot. The newspaper said his gun went off and shot himself in the legs. Of course, he tells it a different story. He says it's some other person hunting with him shot him. Now, I, I, I'm not going to challenge that and say it's a lie because I don't know whether that ha which way it happened. It don't really matter. That's not the point I'm going to get to. But the point, if you look at that, date in that newspaper, December 26, 1923, uh, you'll find that it says there that William Branham was 16 years old. Well, that'll put his date of birth right back to where his mom and dad said it was, 1907. Okay, <laughs> well, that's okay, but then he says before he was a Christian, that that fortune teller, whoever they were, told him his birthday, which would be 1909, uh, April the 6th, 5 o'clock. But then when he got married, notice right here next to it, he in his own handwriting there, if I can get it up there, just a little bit further where you can read it, maybe I can, if it wants to go, don't want to, but we'll get it one way or another. There we go. Uh, you can see that sign by William Branham in his own handwriting, and he testifies he was born April the 8th, 1908. Now, you know, if he knew his birthday before he was a Christian, 
And then after he met his uh, wife, Hope, on the marriage license, which he, this is after he become a Christian, uh, they went to church when he tells about being engaged and so on and so forth. It, uh, so we know he become a Christian before he got married. And so when he got married on his marriage license, his date's completely different. It's changed to April 8th, 1908. So we got 1907, 1908, and later 1909. In his testimonies, trying to connect his birth with other ministers that was famous, he changed his birthday again. But that's beside the point. But what I'm saying, I always knew when I was told I was born, and I know what my birth certificate says. Why would he tell that? And why would he come back there and try to vindicate his birthday by a fortune teller and then say it different on the marriage license? Well, you say that's one thing. Yes, it is. It's just one thing. Of course, he also tells about, I think, the pastor wasn't it, Roy Davis. He said it was a Baptist church. So why did he say that? It was a Pentecostal Baptist church, plainly, on the deed, on, on in the newspapers, lots of articles on Roy Davis preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. He claimed to be a Baptist, but he baptized the name of Jesus Christ. And he called himself a Pentecostal Baptist. And I think I might say some words wrong because I have trouble with words sometimes. But the Mitchell Walker meeting uh, that Brother Bram went to, he said that it's the first time he heard of Pentecost. At that very hour when he was up at that meeting, he had a church in Jeffersonville called the Pentecostal Tabernacle. Some call it the Willie Branham Pentecostal Tabernacle. It's on the deed. It existed. When he come back there, he was pastoring the church. His mother-in-law said, you just pastor your church. And of course, he called it a Baptist church. Now, why do you say that? What was his purpose? It wasn't a Baptist church. It had never been a Baptist church. It would, would not be a Baptist church ever. So why would he say that? See? So it, you read these things now that we got people that sacrificed and, and worked and got these records out. So we kind of know that William Branham, we well, can't depend on anything he says about the past. Now that was a bad memory, or was it a delusion, or was he just lying? Well, I don't know. I don't have any way of telling. So I, I just, it was one of the three, because it wasn't the truth. See, it wasn't the truth. The truth bears record of itself, and every evidence back there of those things he said was not truth. The Jefferson paper made... Uh, wasn't a lot of news, I guess, back there. It went on uh, to get the paper full of things. And, you know, if you had a birth or a divorce or a uh, church had a meeting or something went on, they had that in the paper. Now, William Brown tells different versions of how many was at the baptism on the river when he was baptizing. One time he says 140, another time he says 500. Which one of those do you believe? Uh, he tells about 5,000 people being there, I think 4,000 one time, up 10,000, which would have been every man, boy, baby in the city of Jacksonville, according to the population back then. Uh, the newspaper didn't record that. He recorded one meeting he had and baptized 14. So where did the 500 or the 140 or where did the 5,000, 10,000, it either come up from a delusion or a lie are strictly mentally confused memory. But it's not truth. It didn't happen. There's no proof. There's no newspaper carried the fact that a light appeared, a voice spoke, people screamed and fainted. It just didn't happen. There's no record of it. So why would we believe other events when there's no witness to them? That's, that's really strange, see? Just like the many prophecies he talks about that he changed several times, they evolved over time. Uh, you know, uh, Roosevelt started the World War, but then when the, Lee Vale wrote the book, and he supposedly said he, he, he read it and proved it, and it was ready to go to print and set out, and it changed that to Hitler. Well, to tell you the truth, for my take on what William Bram said, I don't believe he ever prophesied those things. I believe he made them up at a later date, 
and claim to have prophesied them. Now again, trying to be fair, he may have actually thought he prophesied it. He may have had a delusion and said it. We know some of them were true. Uh, you, you can prove it by, you know, we always go back to the river, uh, excuse me, the bridge crossing the river there, 16 people fall off. That's just not true. Uh, 16 people didn't fall off. He didn't see a vision of that. Or if he did, it was a false vision. If it was a prophecy, it was a false prophecy. If it wasn't a false prophecy, then he lied or had a delusion about even prophesying that. There was one newspaper article come out about 16 men falling off a bridge, and that was years before he was even born. Now, I could go into a lot of different things, what he said. But what really bothers me is when you bring out other things, you see nearly everyone that follows the message, like me, and I, I was guilty as much. I'm not trying to put any blame on anybody else other than myself. Except I have repented it, I have confessed, I have told people I was wrong, I have apologized to it, and I've done my best to the people still living under my ministry to tell them the truth about these things. Of course, they're not accepting it because I was freed from a spiritual prison, and they're still in that spiritual prison, held there by the words of a false preacher. Now, I challenged a, a preacher. His name was Jesse Smith. Uh, he may listen to this. I'm not running Jesse Smith down. He's probably got a wonderful family, several children. He's a school teacher. He's, he's a good person. He publicized some things on uh, Believe the Sign. Uh, there's a video out there of him, uh, of debate, I guess they call it. Another than Tim Humes, uh, another message preacher. If you hadn't listened to those and Tim Hume's testimony, you might get on there and listen to it. I think it's really interesting when people come to the knowledge that the Bible's right and everything else is wrong. It changes their life. But I've got something I want to show you. And I showed this to Brother Smith. We call him Brother. I don't mind that. We are brothers. I said, well, if he's wrong and you're right, why do you call him Brother? Somebody told me not to call Brother Branham Brother. Well, if we're not brothers spiritually, we're brothers in the human flesh. So we all go back to Adam. At least that's what the Bible says. So uh, we leave it like that from that subject for right now. But let's, let's look at something because everyone in the message, I didn't see this myself until I started studying. I heard somebody say something. I started studying things. And first thing you know, whew, what has happened? Uh, it's something William Branham said. Now, I've talked a lot, and y'all have looked at this, and I know you don't want to look at me particularly, but here I am. I'm just talking while you were looking at that, but I'm going to let you look at something else. And I want you to think about this. Everyone that looks at this, or has looked at it, has to make a choice. What is that choice, Brother Joe? Well, that choice is what is truth. See, I read in 2 Thessalonians to you there that if you don't love the truth, God will send you a strong delusion. And so people that follow William Bram's message, every one of the ministers, just like me, myself, see, when you get up and quote William Branham, I may make another video down the road here not too long about the God the gods of William Branham. Uh, <clears throat> and the people that follow him create their own God from his message. And there are many versions of his message out there, and they all present a Jesus Christ. It's not scriptural. But <clears throat> what I'm saying, you lie if you follow a false doctrine. Now, I said William Branham, but I'm not picking on him more than I am any other denomination that teaches error. If they teach error, then everybody that believes that error and in that church, if they talk about it or every preacher that believes it, is lying. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about and then maybe uh, you'll understand. I'm sorry I left that camera off so long, but you can hear my words. So let's see if this goes right. Uh, I talked a while ago. I'll leave that on there. I want to show you that. Let's look at this right here. Notice this, 1 John 2.27, the anointing. I didn't finish this a while ago. 
I got my mind off. But if it abideth in you. In other words, the Holy Ghost is anointing. And if it's in you, you'll need not man teach you. Now that don't mean God didn't place teachers in the church because he did. But see, your final teaching has to come from the Holy Ghost. If I tell you there's only one God and go through all the scriptures, why I believe that. Uh, there's a lot of people that are what they call oneness Pentecost that blindly follow it and can't even prove by scriptures what they believe. Same way in trinities. They can prove by types and shadows and words, but they can't prove it by scriptures. See, but you, you're taught something. You can teach the truth, no matter how hard you teach or how right it is to people. Still, they either follow blindly or they search the scriptures. And then as this says this, that anointing teaches you of all things. And his truth is no lie. Even as it has taught you, you shall abide. Now, if you've been taught by man, that don't mean you're going to stay at that teaching. You might change from a Pentecost to a Baptist to a Methodist, a Presbyterian to a Catholic. I don't know what you'll change to, but it don't mean you'll abide. Now, you might stay with the teaching from a young child forward, but all churches evolve. The uh, Pentecostal church that I once attended many, many years ago to start out with after I was in the Baptist church is evolved. And it's nothing like it started out. And like the Ephesian church in the Bible, it talks about if, if you don't get back, repent. They left their first love that he'd move the candlestick out of its place. I once thought that was a preacher, but it's not. It's the church itself. There'll be no church there to give light to wherever it's setting if they didn't repent. So God has people, Christians, to give light. And that's your purpose, every one of you. But see, the f teaching. See, some preachers might say, well, that means that you'll understand, you'll accept my teaching. Well, I'd allow, allow, like to get a following like that. But most false teachers take away the teaching of the Holy Ghost. Because the only people that follow truth is those that seek, ask God for truth, knock on his door, search for truth. That's what the Bible said in Matthew, the seventh chapter. It tells us two things. <clears throat> that the straight gate's narrow and few find it. Many will go down that other road. It also tells us those that asked, now this is about salvation, not for a new car, will receive. It also tells us those that seek, See, have you ever lost anything? I have, and if it's something important, I really sought everywhere to try to find that thing. Now, you have to search like that to find truth. It don't just stank out by, come out by some preacher's mouth and that's it. You have to listen to a preacher, that's fine. Faith comes by hearing, but if it's real faith, it'll turn you to the scriptures. And if you have the Holy Ghost, it'll vindicate those scriptures to be truth. Because it'll teach you of all things, the truth, no lie. And as it teaches you that, you're going to stay from then on. And that's important. Now, let's let's go to these differences that I'm talking about, if you allow me. If I scoot this up just a little bit. Bear with me. Oh, there we go. Well, we'll start right there. Now, I said people have to make a choice. I sent Brother Jesse Smith uh, this scripture. And it says this. This is William Branham, Brother William Branham. However you want me to address it, be fine with me. Uh, uh, you don't have to call people brother to be a Christian or to respect them. But he said this. It's sad, but she fell for it again. Christ's bride... Now, that's bride, not the denomination, not, not the fools virgins, as he called them, uh, not a false church, but Christ's bride fell for him and took the intellectual knowledge of some seminary preacher instead of believing the peer vindicated word of God. Now, what is he saying? He said the bride took the intellectual knowledge of a seminary preacher. What did Jesus say? Read it right there. John 10, 4 through 5. When he put us forth his own sheep, where his sheep goes, where he puts them. 
but he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Okay? Now what are you going to do with that? You either make a ch choice, you either believe Jesus is right, and, and the bride can't follow a stranger, or you believe Jesus Christ is wrong, and the bride fell for a stranger. There, there's, it's plain right there, preacher, layman, whoever you are. There's not two choices there. You either believe a lie or you believe the truth. The truth is a scripture. Always has been. When Brother Jesse Smith was sent this, he said, well, Brother Bram didn't mean that. I said, all right. Let me put forth more. I give him 17 times, Brother Bram said that. 17 times. Yes, I've got every one of them. And his answer was, well, Brother Branham was just wrong 17 times. I got his email where he said that now. And my answer to that, I don't want to follow a man for eternal life that's wrong on what he says 17 times. Now the reason William Branham taught that the bride fell for it is real simple. I'll read that other quote in a minute. He had to teach the bride fail because if it didn't, he wouldn't have a special ministry. He just had to preach the gospel and have a lot of competition out there probably. But to teach the bride fail, then you've got to have somebody to restore her back again. And of course, that fell in him as well as several other people. Uh, you know, I, I won't name them all. Herbert Armstrong was one and uh, Charles Russell uh, What's his name was one. Uh, uh, Joseph Smith was one. There's a lot of them out there claim it. Uh, and we could look them up and tell you, but it's, it's a lot of people claim things, but they, they twist scriptures to make it fit their agenda, as they call it, just like the politicians do. They twist their promises to fit their agenda. Uh, and we're in a terrible place right now, spiritually and politically. We need a lot of prayer. And I wish everybody would fall on their knees and pray for this, what's left of the people in this nation that want to follow truth, if there's any out there. But I'm just, I'm just saying, see, it's so easy to lie. Uh, if I believe William Branham said something about the bride 17 times, the very basis of his teaching that he's Malachi 4, I'd have to lie to defend it. Most people, when I present this to them, will say, well, he didn't mean it like that. He meant the foolish virgins fail. Well, foolish virgins are already down. And, and a, a good friend of mine said, no, he means the denomination fail. He didn't mean the bride. But they're lying. He meant what he said. Let's show you another there. Most people know this. If you read the ones I've got on the seven church ages, were they real? Of course there wasn't seven church ages. Well, where's the bride, Brother Joe? You think history records how many are really bride right now? Now they'll record a big meeting. Hey, gay, uh, they'll, they'll mention his meetings. I think he even met the president. Uh, Franklin Graham, uh, sure, you hear about what he's doing all the time. Billy Graham, when he's there, sure, Oral Roberts. All these others, you hear all kinds of things about him and recorded in books written about it. Where's the bride? See, God's got a book he tells you about in Malachi. And he's keeping the names of those that love him, that search after him and speak about him in the correct way. And he's got a record of all of them. But I'll assure you, you know, they got Martin Luther and what he done, John Calvin, which was a murderer. I hope he repented, but I doubt if he did. And they go over those things that people even call themselves Calvinists to this day, identifying themselves back with a man that, murdered people didn't go along with him and that may come back again i don't know but look here what william brown said it's just another one in time of van he said this all the way through to 65 he never changed when she come up on the day of pentecost that original doctrine that was repent be baptized in the name of jesus christ that's what william brown taught that original faith then what rome began to do sandy canker worm 
sand upon worm, and each one took his part off the fruit, the leaves, and everything, and sucked it all down. What did Jesus say? I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now either William Branham is telling a lie, or Jesus was. It's just that simple. She said, you shouldn't say that, Brother Joe. Well, I am. I'm saying it. Because the Bible has to be true. I have to look at that scripture and believe that no one can take me out of God's hands. If the bride fell at Nicaea, then if there's a bride in this day, it can also fall. That makes void many scriptures that Jesus spoke, like the false prophets will fool the elect if it was possible. It's not possible. Don't you understand that? The teachings of William Branham, like many people out there, many churches out there, many people I've met, many sermons I've listened to, make void the scriptures through their traditions. And Jesus said, if you worship a tradition of man, then you worship in vain. I hope that you can understand those things. I'm not trying to say anything, that, and, uh, uh, you know, different than what should be said. I mean, I don't know how to say it any different. See, my Father which give to me is greater than all. He's greater than wrong. He's greater than false teachers. He's greater than false prophets. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. See, no man. You can't do it. No false teacher, no prophet. You might be in deception like I was for 45 years, thinking you're in truth. But God's mercy, not my righteousness, not anything I've done, but his mercy just woke me up one day. Well, I was praying, asking for understanding of the teaching of the seals because I was totally confused of the many opposite teachings in the seals that didn't make sense. He woke me up and, and let me know that nothing's truth but scriptures. And I'm telling you that if you don't know what truth is, many a sermon you can listen to, but make sure that it's scriptural. And that's all I, I can say for you today. I hope it helps you. I may one day, one of these days, in a few weeks, Lord willing, I don't know when, I have to feel inspired, talk about the God that William Branham left in the hands of the people and how they're worshiping something that is not even scriptural. Well, God bless you. You'll have to understand because of the many either delusions, lies, or whatever it was, memory. You know, uh, the little boy's healed over there. Where was it? Across the sea. He said he had a vision about it. And he tells about how boys hit by a car. Two of them was. One of them picked up a car and took to the hospital. The other one was laying there. And he went over and said, if it's not up in five minutes, I'm a false prophet. Well, the truth is, by all witnesses, that every word, be proven true by two or three witnesses. There was three witnesses in that car, and all of them tell the same story. The little boy that he said would be up in five minutes, or he's a false prophet, wasn't up in five minutes. It was picked up and put in the car. On the way to the hospital, they thought he was dead, but William Ram said, I feel a heartbeat or something like that. They all tell the same story. Jack Moore gave the same story to Voice of God recording, and they even put it out. So do you believe that happened? No, I don't. Neither do I believe a lot of the healings he claimed he had happened that he tells about. Do you believe healings happened, Brother Joe? Sure. I've been healed, and I believe miracles happened under William Branham, Oral Roberts, all of them. Uh, I can name all the different preachers back there. I believe miracles happened. They've got videos of them. I do not doubt it. I believe cancer's healed. Tumors fell off. I believe those things. But none of those things make a man the truth. What makes a man the truth is when he pre preaches and teaches what the scriptures say. There's no other truth to be found. Now, I don't believe William Brown created squirrels because there's no evidence. It's just could another delusion, what he thought happened maybe. But it, it's, I just don't believe it's to be truth because there's no if you got no witnesses, then you're not obligated to believe it. Well, God bless you.
I pray God will guide you to all truth if you haven't been already. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Until we meet again, God bless you.